after 34 days without rain. He said that cover crop usage. Well, I was out visiting a farm in Caroline County, and a farmer said he. The gentleman's time's expired. Now I recognize the gentlelady from Virginia, Mrs. Spamberger, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Vilsack, for being here. I come from Virginia, where our number one private industry is agriculture. Um, and I had a bit of a visceral reaction when the gentleman talked about hobby farmers and those who don't make farming their full-time income, um, because I represent so many of those farmers. And the reason that farming may not be their full-time income is because they can't afford to do it. We have small generational family farms that frankly, many of the conservation programs have helped the farmers I represent save and make more productive. And I'll give a specific example. I was out visiting a farm in Caroline County and a farmer said he has a thousand acres of cereal rye and he did a test dig, this is last year, and they found rye roots seven feet deep. And that was after 34 days without rain. He said that cover crop usage and their use of no-till practices, the cover crop land never gave up an inch. His soil is rich, his ability to produce on that land is made possible, according to the farmer, by his usage of conservation programs that are made possible because of these federal programs. So I'm grateful that you are here to speak to a whole variety of issues. Um, and I am proud that we were able to invest in conservation programs at USDA through the Inflation Reduction Act, because in fact, we know that there are so many more farmers like the one I just mentioned who want to participate in these programs that lower input costs, increase their bottom line, and make farming possible in communities like those that I represent. Uh, but so many are turned away because of lack of funding. So I'm pleased to see that according to new USDA report on funding uh, on IRA implementation, Virginia has already received nearly $8 million in funding that goes directly to farmers across our Commonwealth who want them to cre increase their productivity, improve wildlife habitats, improve air and water quality, and help farmers stay farmers. So could you please elaborate on USDA's progress in getting IRA conservation dollars to farmers and producers, and specifically, has the law helped these programs meet, reach more producers? Well, clearly, uh, the answer to your question is yes. It's obviously increased uh, uh, the reach of the programs. Uh, there is still great, a great deal to do. We've increased the number of people working at NRCS. We've entered into cooperative agreements so that we have a broader reach so that uh, uh, those who, who might not be able to understand their uh, qualify for the program are finding out about the program, we're assisting and guiding them into participating. And let me just simply say that uh, roughly 85 to 88 percent of farmers in this country today require off-farm income mm -hmm. to be able to keep the farm. So with all due respect, it's not about hobby farmers, it's about folks who love what they're doing and frankly would like to be able to do more of it, but they don't have the income streams that support it, so they have to have an off-farm job. And to me, the key here is creating opportunities for that farm to generate more revenue. You mentioned cover crops. That's an opportunity potentially for that farm to qualify for ecosystem service market payments. Yes. So now instead of just a crop, they're going to get an environmental payment. There are a multitude of other strategies here that we're investing in, and conservation and investments in conservation are critically important to allowing those income streams to, uh, to occur. And that's what I hear time and time again from the producers I represent. Um, so in that vein, how can Congress continue supporting USDA, whether through statutory flexibility, you mentioned additional staffing, what else needs to happen to expedite these funds getting out the door? Well, first, a budget that doesn't require us to cut staff. Secondly, maintaining the IRA funding. And, and sir, you said it before, but could you just remind everyone how much staff does it, do you have to cut because of the budget challenges? Well, the House budget appropriation, ag, ag appropriations talked about an 18% cut to our budget, so you can do the math. Yes, thank you. Please continue. Yeah. So maintain the IRA funding. Let's have, get a budget, pass a farm bill, so there's certainty in, in terms of the programs. Um, and, you know, I think to a certain extent, continue to support our efforts on the climate smarts because that's also tied to the conservation uh, activities and programs. 
We saw tremendous demand for that and tremendous interest in it. And just in closing, uh, related to some of the challenges at the grocery store, I received a message uh, from a, a darling constituent who's speaking of our extraordinary country said, I, for once, still find it amazing that you can buy a pineapple in January for $1.29 on sale at the grocery store. Truly an incredible country. Thank you for serving this incredible country. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. So I'm grateful that you are here to speak to a whole variety of issues, so many of those farmers, and the reason that farming may not be their full-time And they found rye roots seven feet deep, and that was aftifically. Has the law helped these programs? The gentleman's time has expired. Now recognize the gentlelady from Virginia, Mrs. Bamberger. I come from Virginia, where our number one private industry in Reduction Act, because in fact, we know that there are so many more farmers like the one up an inch. His soil is rich, his ability to produce farmers and those who don't make farming their full-time income, um, because I represent- For five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Vilsack, for being here. Directly to farmers across our Commonwealth who want them to create, increase their productivity,